In this video, sponsored by Game4, I'm going to tell you about how your hobbies should be fun and not just work. So a friend of mine recently sent me a link to an article from late September in the New York Times. And that article is called In Praise of Mediocrity, which, you know, to some of us doesn't necessarily sound, it sounds maybe like they're kidding, maybe it's sarcastic, written by a guy named Tim Wu. And if you take the time to actually read the article, as I did, it actually rings very true to those of us in the wargaming, you know, hobby. So what's the gist of the article? The gist of the article is that uh, initially he bemoans the fact that a lot of people that he talks to don't have any hobbies. And he believes that it has to do with the fact that everybody these days, if you have a hobby, you have to be excellent at it because the cult of excellence has been driven into uh, at least at the least American society, if not in a lot of other places all over the globe. So if you're not uh, just running because you enjoy running, then you're training for a marathon or you're training for a half marathon or you're, you know, whatever. That it's, it, no one's just doing it because they enjoy it. They're doing these hobbies because they have to be the best at them or as good as they can be, let's say. And partially that has to do with, you know, maybe if you work a whole lot, that when it becomes time to, you know, have your leisure and do your hobby, that you, you know, really work hard at your hobby because you've been working hard at work and maybe it's just you don't have an off switch. And that's some people, certainly. Um, he kind of bemoans the fact as well that if you don't have a hobby, it's because you work very hard and then you come home and then you just watch stuff on screens, whether it's surfing the web or watching television or whatever. And then, you know, that leisure, at least in my opinion, I share some of the same opinion, I think, with this author. My opinion, that kind of leisure, if it's what you want to do, that's cool, but it's not what I want to do. What I want to do, nine times out of ten when I get home from work or pretty much anywhere, is I want to go and either build models or, or, or paint models um, or, you know, play games with models. But frequently the actual building and the, uh, you know, all that jazz takes longer you take you spend more time on the building and the painting generally than you do on the hobby. Eventually you might get to a point where you've got everything painted that you're ever going to need and then you just play and you don't do any painting anymore. You put your brushes away and they get dusty. That doesn't happen with most of us, but maybe it happens with you. The fact of the matter is is that the painting and the the the, the hobbying, the glue and stuff to your fingers, all that stuff, some people and I've learned this over years of talking to people at conventions and wherever and getting messages through Facebook and email and whatever. Some people don't want to make that leap and get into that portion of the hobby because they fear that they won't be excellent at it. Excellence is a funny thing. Uh, I don't particularly care for it in all areas of life. I would like a doctor who is going to say, operate on me to be excellent. I, you know, I even want my dentist to be excellent, you know, that kind of stuff, or at least quite good. Um, but when I'm talking about my leisure time, I don't personally feel, and that's kind of the point of the article, which I've linked below. I don't personally feel that hobby time has to be excellence time. I think personally that hobby time equals leisure time and having fun. Now, that being said, if your goal in life is to win a golden demon, to win a big, you know, whatever, crystal brush, any kind of prizes like those, the big miniature painting competitions that happen all over the world, that's great. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. But the fact of the matter is, is that not everybody, not all of you out there, and certainly not me, have to do that. Some people see painting their models as a means to an end. I need to paint these so that they look nice on the board when I play. Some people don't care. So they just play with unpainted models. That's a valid life choice. Um, I generally don't enjoy playing against, uh, you know, unpainted models because I enjoy the overall visual spectacle of a cool game like that. So, you know, there's back and forth on that. But that's not what this article, this particular video is about or this article. What it's about is about you have to understand that if you enjoy it, 
You don't have to be excellent at it. The enjoyment itself is the ends. And the means is sitting down and painting little dudes or dudettes or whatever, robots, aliens, uh, and, and, and making that go. And if you do get better at it, and if you keep practicing, you at least will to some degree. I have gotten better at painting and, and that kind of stuff. And then I kind of hit, I hit a plateau and then I haven't been getting much better, but I have been getting faster. I did a video about that years ago. Pachow. Um, but that's not the way it works for everybody. Some people keep getting better and better. And the benefit to me, part of the fun, besides the actual just sitting at my hobby thing and painting and focusing, listening to a cool audiobook or a cool podcast, and that kind of stress relief, the other benefit is that I get things done, I'm doing that kind of stuff, and I am getting better. I'm constantly watching videos about how to get better at painting my models. I'm watching videos about how to get better at all this kind of shenanigans with the video editing and the cameras and the lighting and all that stuff. I love to learn, but not everybody needs to go even that far. A lot of people pretty much just want to paint. They get to a certain level that they, that they are comfortable with, but is still fun to them. And then they can just enjoy the action and the output of game, uh, just painting all your game pieces, you know, having that finished thing. Let's say it's a board game. Let's say it's something like Zombicide. It comes with tons and tons and tons of plastic parts. You have an enjoyable time going through and painting that entire thing, and then you get done, and now you have a really nice looking set to play with. But you're going to probably want to keep going and start painting something else. So either you buy more Zombicide or you move on to a different game, and that's fine. But the actual painting, and maybe it's not the best stuff in the world, but it's pretty good. And I'm going to bet that your end model is probably better than the first model in that set. But that's the enjoyment, is the actual physical act of doing the painting. Now, as I said, this is not for everybody. There are people out there who just absolutely hate painting. Those people I've lost at this point in this particular video, and that's fine. There are people out there who want to be the best. They want to win the big awards and do that stuff, whether it's because they've got a job in commission painting, which it's very understandable and it's helpful to be able to say, I've won these awards and therefore you get more money for which you can feed your family or at least yourself or whatever. That totally makes sense too. But if you're a person who's looking at this as your hobby, the sitting down and the painting the models, the building the models, all that kind of stuff, terrain as well, all that, you know, all that crafty stuff fits under this kind of umbrella. If you're in the situation where these are the things that you enjoy doing, the act of doing it, which is what I've been kind of telling people about on these videos for at least the last several years, then you have to understand that that can be the kind of end all be all. And to sit down and say, you know, I've been painting and I enjoy it, but I'm not as good as the guys in those magazines. I'm not as, I'm not even getting that much better than I was six months ago. Just for fun, go back to see something like the first thing you painted. Here's a picture actually of, um, of our friend Sam's, one of his earliest models. He's got it in a case at our local game shop. And here's some pictures of some other stuff that he's recently done. You can, if you want to, go into super excellence, like somebody like Sam or uh, these pe people who win the big you know, prizes, and that's great. If you enjoy it, certainly, that's really the important part. But if you really just want to sit down and paint your kill team and get onto that one or paint your Zombicide or paint your Malifaux crew or paint your, uh, you know, Age of Sigmar, your Bolt Action, whatever game, or even if you just want to paint like cool, like display stuff, like, you know, busts. There's special companies out there, small companies usually that sell things that are designed more towards display painters. If you want to go that direction and do it because you enjoy it, great. If you want to do it because you enjoy it, but you also enjoy learning so you can get better, great. Figure out what part of the hobby, what part of the leisure hobby uh, is the part that makes you happiest and do that because if you fret too much about your leisure time, if you're not, I'm not good enough at the thing that I like to do for fun, that's the wrong way to look at it. You need to look at the thing that you do for relaxation, uh, stress relief, and fun as the thing that you should try to do more of. And if you tweak it in some way and say, well, now I'm doing it not for fun, 
think about that and see if that's something that you really want to do or if it's just something that maybe society has taught you that you're supposed to do. Well, you need to be the best. Do I? Do I really? Or can I just keep painting the things that I enjoy to have a nice kind of interesting and fun um, experience when I get home from work that at the end of it all, I've got some cool models to show my friends. Would you like to play more games with more people in your local area? And I'm not just talking about war gaming. I'm talking about board gaming. I'm talking about role-playing games. I'm talking about collectible card games. Game 4. It's an app that helps you find local gamers, stores, events, and gaming groups in your area. Now, full disclosure, I helped design the app. It's my day job. Game 4 is my day job, but I'm a strong believer in this app being able to help you and people around you and the stores in your area and the stores all over the world to be able to get more games happening, more people finding other tabletop gamers to play with, and people just being able to play more games. Whether it's looking for games in the game events section, if you're looking for other players to play with in the looking for players section, or if you're looking for clubs and groups in your local area that you either want to join or potentially even start, all those things are available in the Game 4 app for iOS and for Android. Also, if you travel, we've got 6,400 plus stores worldwide in the Game 4 app for you to be able to find very easily uh, at pretty much anywhere you travel. So check out the app. Go to www.iamgame4.com. It's there on the screen. It's also in the description below. Check out the app and um, start playing more games with more people in your local area.